Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Realtor Nation podcast, episode 10. My name is Ian Hoover, and I am the host of this podcast, and I'm very excited to bring to you the Realtor Nation, a show to improve your business. 87% of real estate agents fail. It's time to change that. The people I bring on this show are here to help you improve your business. They either are very successful in what they do, or they do something very unique to bring something to your business. I'm also looking for more people to interview on our show. If you're interested in coming on, please shoot me an email with your resume to ian at ianhoover.com. Today is a very special episode. We're going to be talking about wholesaling versus being an agent with our special guest, Mike Pastor. Before we get started, I want to take some time to talk about his impressive resume. Mike's the founder of The Property Wiz, his wholesaling business since 2014, and he's wholesaled over 60 properties. He also has his license since 2015 and hangs with a property management firm. He does some flipping on the side and owns a small rental portfolio as well. Very cool. So without further ado, let me bring to you Mike. Welcome in, Mike. Hey, Ian. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being on, man. I appreciate it. So um, <clears throat> I'm very excited about this episode. Uh, I wanted to make this podcast because I feel like there's a lot of agents out there who are leery of wholesalers yeah. and don't really understand it. Uh, and really I think wholesalers get a bad rap when that's not the case. You guys have a business you're running and I think that agents and wholesalers can work very well together. Right. Uh, so I want to start by talking about your journey. How did you get into real estate? So, uh, back in, I'd say 2013 ish, uh, I was kind of, uh, you know, I, I've been in corporate it for over a decade and, uh, I kind of advanced to the highest level that I could get to um, pay wise and, uh, you know, management wise. And so it was like, you know, and I was just spending so many hours on the phone, uh, you know, every day and it was just tying up my life. So I, I kind of, you know, went out there searching for something else. And, uh, I had a couple, um, uh, not failed businesses, but, uh, I, I looked for a couple different types of businesses like restaurants and stuff like that that didn't really work out or I lost interest in. So that at that point, that's when I found uh, real estate. And um, I was like, man, this is, this is pretty cool. You know, I can, I can, you know, set up a rental portfolio to bring in passive income and stuff like that and not, you know, just have my time, you know, my freedom uh, to do what I want. Um, And and that's, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the the ultimate goal. But uh, as you know, it's, it's hard work too. So <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah. Nothing in real estate's easy. Yeah. You know? And, and the, the people that are good at it definitely uh, work their butt off for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So most of your business is wholesaling. Is that correct? Uh, at this point in time? Yes. I, I would say um, probably about 90, 90% of my business is wholesaling. Yeah. Okay. So for yeah. the people out there that don't know, what is wholesaling? So wholesaling is basically going out and finding a deal and um, getting, now this is the key here. This is the key. So you need to have your, your, your contracts in place and, and get the place under contract. Okay. You are entering into an agreement with a seller um, to this for the disposition of their property basically. Um, and on the other side, I mean, you, you have that deal in place and basically you align a buyer with a seller and collect a fee for doing that. Um, now, like you said, there are a, a lot of wholesalers get a bad rap. Um, I think that, uh, some of that is warranted because there's a lot of wholesalers out there that don't do it legally. <laughs> um, so that's, that's probably, you know, people that have a bad um, uh, opinion of wholesalers, they've probably come across some of those. <laughs> yeah, almost. People. I mean, I think every industry has the uh, pseudo used car salesman type yeah. people in there that just do anything they can to make money. And yeah. it's unfortunate. There's agents that are like that too. I mean, you yeah. just have to <laughs> kind of move around those people and, and uh, do the best you can to serve your clients. Yeah. So you also have your license. Why did you decide to get your real estate license? So, uh, well, that was my first step uh, in, in getting into real estate was getting my license. Um, 
I uh, wanted to learn as much as I could about it. I wanted to learn, you know, the legal side um, and just, you know, how, how things operated. Um, so I got my license back in, I think it was 2014 um, and let it expire uh, in 2015. Um, and then I just, I, I started getting more heavier into investing and realized that, uh, that's a good thing to have. Um, uh, you know, so I can have access to the MLS and, and, um, and, and things like that. Um, so I, I renewed it and, um, and I actually, um, uh, had, uh, joined up with a broker, uh, property management broker that, uh, allows me the freedom to, um, um, you know, just pay my monthly dues and, and, uh, and, uh, hold the license there. Very cool. So the reason why you wholesale compared to just becoming an agent and listing the property for sale, what, what would that be? Well, um, I would say, I would say the income potential, uh, is one thing. Uh, the second would be, uh, freedom as well. Um, so there, I, there's, you know, there's a lot of work as being an agent in being an agent. Um, I, uh, I don't like paperwork, <laughs> lots of paperwork. <laughs> um, and it's, it's a lot of, uh, driving around and, uh, and, uh, you know, appointments here, late nights, uh, writing contracts up and stuff like that. Um, which wholesalers do too, but, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of uh, have, have built the business so that I have, b- have been able to step back from that and, and not, not do that as much. Very cool. So have you ever listed a property for sale as an agent? I have not, no. Okay. No. So you've never actually performed the agent duties. You just use no. it for MLS access. Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, so you also invest in properties, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, is that like your main goal? So you're using wholesaling to be able to buy more investment properties for your long-term growth or what, what is your goal? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, wholesaling in wholesaling, you, you get chunks of cash, uh, that, that, uh, are, it's, it's not all that consistent by the way. <laughs> um, so, so when you get, you know, chunks of cash, uh, you can, you can invest it into my, my goal is to invest it into, uh, passive income rentals. Um, ideally I'd like to start, uh, getting some, you know, bigger multi-units. I, I'm in, uh, duplexes to, to, uh, quads right now. Uh, that's, that's kind of my, my level. So I'd like to get up to uh, some bigger buildings, uh, not just in Pittsburgh, but uh, in um, uh, a couple markets around the country. So I get this question a lot from people that I, mostly from people that I first meet that are thinking about using my services as a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, they find out that I'm an investor as well. So you probably keep most of the good deals for yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Well, it depends where they're at on location wise too. So, I mean, if I, if I have, which I do shortly, and I might have to tell you the one about this one too. Uh, there's a good prospect in Bethel park right now that we're working. Um, and it's got quite a bit of meat on the bone. Um, that's too far for the, the, uh, construction the contractor context that I have. That's quite a, quite a haul for them. So, I mean, it's going to cost me more to, uh, do it, um, you know, to get the job done. So, I mean, it really, it, it depends on location. Like I'm out in, uh, in the Eastern suburbs here. So if I have something come up around here that, uh, is a good flip opportunity. Yeah. I'll jump on it in a heartbeat. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I mean, mine is the opposite way, right? So yeah. my, I wear my agent hat first. Mm-hmm. So I look at my investing as my side business. So, okay. um, so if I have a client in front of me and they ask me that question, mm-hmm. um, you know, I usually, you know, I say, look, I have to put food on the table and a roof over my head for my yeah. family, which means you come first, not me personally. So, right. um, you know, but as a wholesaler, you're, you're just doing deals, whether you're doing yeah. deals for yourself or doing deals for other ones. So ones that don't fit into your, your round hole, uh, mm-hmm. you're, you're wholesaling off to, um, to other, other people and still making money, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. Yep. So what's your favorite thing about our business? 
Uh, so my favorite thing in the business is marketing. Um, that's, that's kind of, uh, uh, what I'd say I'm best at and what I like doing best. So, um, marketing like social media marketing or uh, everything, everything I do. I do everything from direct mail to social media. Uh, I dropped out of, um, paid advertisements online, uh, for the last six months or so. Cause it's starting to get insanely expensive. Um, I've heard that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you name it. I probably, I probably do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. So what's yeah. your least favorite thing about our business? Uh, the least favorite thing is, uh, well, as I mentioned before, paperwork. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, right now I have, um, my, uh, my, uh, uh, CRM system basically can automate most of the paperwork, which I love. <laughs> um, so that really saves me a lot of time and, uh, and effort and headache trying to, um, uh, get contracts out, take them to sellers, have them sell it. Now, I mean, with, uh, I'm sure you probably use some kind of electronic signing, uh, software, you know, yep. that with that, uh, built in, you know, that capability and integration built into my CRM, I'm able to just click a button. It fills it out, uh, sends it for, to them for signature and boom, you're done. Wow. Very cool. So you actually use a CRM software as a wholesaler. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, that's really cool. Maybe we'll get into that here in a little bit. Cool. Um, so this might be a bad question to ask because uh, you, you're a little different than the people I'm usually interviewing on the show. Uh, uh -huh. I, I like to ask this question because it, it shows you how hard people in the industry really work. But I think mm -hmm. that you're kind of trying to balance that work life more than a typical real estate agent. Yeah. So yeah. from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, what does a typical day in the life of Mike look like? Okay. So a typical day is, uh, I'll, I'll usually wake up anywhere from maybe six to seven and, uh, I'll get up and, and have some breakfast and then I'll, I'll, uh, jump on the computer, uh, go through some emails. And, um, I actually keep a, uh, like a task list, a weekly task list for myself, um, to make sure, you know, I'll sit down, uh, either Sunday night or Monday morning and put like, uh, an action item list together for the week. And I'll, I'll, you know, each, each morning I'll look at that list and see, you know, what I want to get done today and, and, uh, have at it. And then, um, you know, I'll, uh, mid morning, I'll, I'll stop working for a bit and, um, hang out with family a bit, uh, you know, 10, 10 30 around that, at that time. And then, uh, have some lunch and, uh, go to the gym. And afternoon is usually my time, uh, where if I have to go out on appointments, I'll, I'll go, I'll go out, you know, during that time. Um, and then, uh, that's about it. Yeah. Hang out and just chill in the evenings. <laughs> Sounds like a pretty nice yeah. setup you got yeah. there. I like it. So in our industry, 87% of real estate agents fail and you deal with a lot of real estate agents from a different point of view. Why do you think that they fail? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I would say probably lack of, I, I don't know if it's lack of effort, but, uh, you know, maybe it's, uh, people that don't do their homework and, you know, over promise and under deliver, uh, to their clients. Um, you know, by doing that, you could get a bad rap and, and, as an agent, when you have a bad rap, you know, your, your listing numbers are going to decrease for sure. So, um, yeah, I think that might be, uh, something that contributes to that. Okay. Yeah. I, I definitely think that could contribute for sure. I mean, if you have a bad reputation, people just don't yeah. want to sell their house with you. Yeah. And plus I, I think I'm, I, there's a lot of, there's a lot of big names out there too, um, that seem to just continually get tons of listings. Um, they have a, you know, they have a huge marketing budget, um, and their name is just everywhere you look, you know, park yep. benches, billboards, stuff like that. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, those guys are getting a lot. I, I imagine those guys are getting a lot of listings and, uh, you know, for the little guy that comes in, starts out, um, you know, it could be quite daunting. 
for that. You have to, uh, you have to prove that you're going to work harder than that agent that's on yeah. the billboard, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So if you were to start over again, uh, what changes would you make to your business? If we went back to 2014, what would you do differently? Well, uh, I would, I would set up, I would kind of, uh, lay the foundation of my business differently. So where I'm at right now, the systems that I have in place, if I could go back to 2014, implement everything at that time, uh, I mean, I, I would have saved so much money <laughs> in time, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, there was a lot of experimenting over the last three, four years um, and trial and error with uh, software, with people, um, and uh, different methods of marketing. And uh, I think right now, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of a well-oiled machine. So it's, it's uh, you know, if I could go back and, and just start there <laughs> where my business is with the foundation that I have now, that would be awesome. Wow. That's uh, that's great advice. And I mean, I think putting system in place as a, early on is a very important step to your business. Yeah. And I've, I'm probably one of the worst uh, at it. You know, I, I'm, yeah. I'm not a big, I mean, I like systems. I'm just mm -hmm. bad at implementing them, you know? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's one of those things that they're very important. So uh, yeah. I hope everybody listening takes that to heart and, and implements some good mm -hmm. systems in place. So I think this is even more uh, in your business than mine, but uh, I, the saying I hear all the time in our business is you have to spend money to make money. Tell us the best free way that you generate business. Uh, the best free way to generate business, well, for me, so I'm looking for, I mean, my, my target audience is, might be a bit, bit different than a listing agent for sure. So, uh, you know, um, the best free way to generate business is to drive neighborhoods. Uh, go drive around, take, take three, four hours, three days a week, drive around, look for tall grass, you know, look for, uh, places in distress, just talk to people and, um, you know, just say, Hey, you know, I'm looking to buy houses. Um, you know, do you know anybody, you know, <laughs> and just, you know, so, so you could build quite a, quite a, uh, substantial, list for free by just doing that you know? I, I love it driving for dollars is, is yeah. a big thing you know as a real estate yeah. investor myself i love driving for dollars if i drive yeah. by somewhere that's got the tall grass i get out and oh, knock yeah. on the door like what, what's it gonna <laughs> hurt you know yeah absolutely uh, and and the thing that you said that's key there is that you you said like almost like you got shut down right you went yeah. and you're driving for dollars you're talking to people yeah. do you know anybody right so that's if you get shut down on your first attempt if you, this, the follow-up question shouldn't be like, okay, thanks, and walk away. The follow-up question yeah. should be like, oh, okay, well, do you know anybody who's looking to buy or mm -hmm. sell a property? You know, because that would be a great person for me to get introduced to. And then right. that can open up the door. And they're not expecting it. They're expecting you just to go away. Yeah. Um, so that's it's a great thing for any industry to ask a follow-up question like that. It's very powerful. Absolutely. So for the marketing you do pay for, which I'm sure is a lot, uh, what's your best return on investment? Um, I would have to say, uh, direct mail. Yeah. Direct mail is, is probably the highest ROI. Um, and I have gotten away from doing a whole lot of direct mail, uh, right now. So I'm only, I'm probably only mailing, um, I would say maybe 15 to 1700 pieces, uh, or, or, um, uh, homeowners, a quarter. So I know, I know there's wholesalers out there that are doing like 30,000 a month, you know? Wow. Yeah. And, uh, I don't, um, I don't do nearly that much. Um, but the, the list that there's only one list that I mail to it's, it's my, uh, my top secret list. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, uh, it's, you know, it's a smaller list. It's very, um, very targeted and, uh, uh, it's, it's definitely the uh, best RI. So instead of mailing to the masses, like probably most wholesalers do, you've yeah. narrowed down a specific list of, of, uh, criteria and that's mm -hmm. what you mail to and you have a higher success rate. So what's your, like, at how, what's your response rate? I think direct mail is usually like three to 5%. Is that about right? Uh, this one's a bit higher. I would say, I would say eight or nine. Yeah. Eight or 9%. 
Um, and we are, we are mailing them uh, at least three times. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the first one I'm sure probably doesn't work as well as the third yeah. one does. So. Right, right. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, um, our industry is changing so much by the day, it seems. Yeah. Uh, if you were to look at our industry, where do you think it's going to be in the next 10 years? Well, uh, honestly, I think, um, I think it's going to be kind of like uh, in the um, – later 2000s, we're going to see another, we're going to see another drop because real estate is cyclical, right? Um, you know, we're, we're going to see a drop. I don't know if it's going to be that much, but, uh, right now it's, it's, um, I think it was, there was somebody online the other day that was talking about this on Facebook in one of the, uh, investor groups that, uh, you know, interest rates are hiking up a little bit and, uh, they're, they're seeing less, less home sales. So, um, might be the indi- indication of a little downturn here in the market, but uh, I think there's certain certain neighborhoods around the Pittsburgh area that uh, will um, will not see uh, that big of a issue if we do have a downturn. Um, you know, the the up and coming neighborhoods I think might uh, might withstand that uh, pretty well. But uh, yeah, and then uh, you know after that, it, it always seems to come back better, you know, after a downturn, I guess, you know, you know, after the next three, four years after that. Yeah. If you look at real estate over a hundred year span, it always goes up, yeah. but there's always going to be these yeah. dips and flows as it's going up. And it's something that uh, you got to keep an eye on. But yeah, if I yeah. look at what's happening in our industry, it seems like uh, the, you know, the loan programs are getting easier and easier, just like mm-hmm. in 2006, 2007, yeah. Uh, the no doc stuff's coming back. I just, I mean, I just received a no doc line of credit the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so you're starting to see the signs that are there that like, yeah. okay, maybe we're three to five years out here from a little, maybe yeah. not a complete crash, but maybe a little correction, uh, yeah. in, in the market. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely think you're, you're spot on with that. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to believe that you ever struggled, but I think we all struggle and we all get to a point where you, you face a wall and you probably thought about quitting. Um, if you could go back in time and, and, and tell us about when you hit that wall and what you did to power through it, I think that would be really big for our listeners. Yeah. So, uh, basically it was, so I, I had, uh, I, this was like 2014, 15 ish, um, I had, uh, I had a couple flips under my belt. You know, I have my first multi-unit rental property. Um, and I wanted to, uh, kind of build like a automated wholesale business, uh, to bring in consistent chunks of cash each month. Uh, and so I, I started, you know, really learning about wholesaling and, um, and trying to, trying to do it. And so I had, I had my first, uh, I think it was the first 11 or 12 properties that I had under contract. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get a buyer for it at all. So, um, and I think this happens to a lot of new wholesalers. Um, so, and that's, that's where, you know, wholesalers can get a bad name too. And I know I, I probably contributed that to, to a bit when I first started too. Um, because you were, you're, um, you're not doing the, the sellers any favor. Um, you know, they're, you're hurting them actually because you're, you're tying up their property and, uh, um, you know, putting them in a bad spot because they just need to sell now, uh, in most cases. Um, so yeah, I, I was, I was sitting there with, you know, 12 properties under contract, uh, couldn't move them. Um, and I thought they were great deals, but, uh, it was due to, I, I learned through that experience that, uh, location matters <laughs> big time. Um, yes, it does. yeah. And, uh, you know, and this happened to be in, uh, in Jeanette. So I had a, I had a nice portfolio in Jeanette that, uh, I think it was, um, I think the cap rate was nearly 32% that I was offering it at. And it was just, it was in a war zone and, um, and it was, uh, and, uh, so, and it was a learning experience for sure that uh, you, you need to focus on where people are buying. <laughs> 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think you definitely uh, need to focus on area and you need to know the prices. And yeah. Um, now, do you think partnering with another wholesaler would have maybe helped you in that in that circumstance? Or uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm uh, I've learned also in the last four years or so that networking is huge. Um, you know, the the power of networking is just amazing for this business. Uh, sometimes, when if you have a property under contract that uh, you know, you can't, you don't seem to have any buyers that want it, you know, somebody else out there probably does. So if you, you know, consistently, uh, regularly talk to, you know, other wholesalers and stuff, uh, you kind of, kind of just, you can help each other out in those ways. And, uh, you know, by bringing buyers and yeah, you're going to give up some of your profits, but that's, that's a lot better than not being able to perform. How important is goal setting to you? Uh, very important. Yeah. Very important. Um, yeah, I, I typically will do, uh, some goal setting in, uh, December each year for the, for the following year. Um, and I plan at least for once a month to, uh, to review the goals and, uh, make sure that, um, you know, I'm on track. If I'm not, what do I need to do to correct it? Um, so yeah, at least, at least once a month, I'm, uh, reviewing, you know, the, the goals that I have for the year. Um, and, uh, those are, those are the bigger goals. I mean, the smaller goals, like I said, I, I make a, a, uh, action item list, uh, each Sunday, uh, for the week. So those are kind of like my goals on a smaller scale as well. Very cool. So what, what is your five-year plan then since you're a big goal setter? Where are you going to be in five years? Five years? Uh, I am going – well, I should, you should let me know you were going to ask that. I could pull my, uh, my uh, sheet up. But uh, I think, yeah, five years is um, uh, to basically uh, generate company revenue um, at a million plus uh, just wholesaling um, and uh, have – I think it was seven or eight employees um, and, you know, myself spending, spending, um, you know, four, four hours or no, no, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think here. Um, I think it was <laughs> 10 hours or less a week uh, in the business. Um, so at that point, you know, it would be kind of just almost hands off to where I can, you know, uh, you know, look at, look at flipping a lot more property reason I do now and uh and uh, looking to acquire you know uh rental assets too very cool that's that's some lofty goals man yeah. I, I'm the same way if you look at my goals uh, I, I got some pretty big ones over the next five mm-hmm. to ten years so nice. um so I feel like mentors are very important I'm lucky enough to be a partner with my mentor mm-hmm. um I'm sure you had a mentor early on uh who was your mentor and how did they help you so I had uh, I had a few people from uh, around the Pittsburgh area that I that I learned with, um, uh, and a couple out out of the out of state as well. So um, there was uh, there was a couple you know through Pittsburgh Ria that that I have learned a lot from uh, you know basically marketing and uh, you know getting the foundation foundational knowledge for marketing and and. Um, uh, contracts and stuff like that. Um, and then I've worked with, uh, a couple guys out of state that, uh, uh, I've, you know, kind of just on a short term basis, I've worked one-on-one with them that, uh, kind of elevated my, um, marketing and my, uh, interaction with sellers and buyers as well. Okay. So it sounds like you had a couple guys that were yeah. helping you out along the way. That's great. So what does retirement look like for you? Uh, retirement looks like for me, uh, well, I don't, I don't, I mean, I love real estate. I don't, I don't know that I'll ever fully retire and just not look back. Um, you know, I will always want to be looking for the next, uh, rental property or something. And, uh, but retirement would be a, a good amount of travel. Um, I'm older than, I'm, I, I started having kids at uh, an older age, so it's going to be like, yeah, the, by the time I retire, which is, I'm hoping to be in the next 12 years. So, um, 
uh, you know, I, I'll be spending a lot of time with uh, kids and, um, and uh, do some traveling and, and uh, just, you know, pop it in here and there on the business and, and uh, you know, just getting some deals <laughs> here and there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'll ever retire either. I'll be doing yeah. something at some point, somewhere, yeah, exactly. you know? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I had uh, kids at an early age, so I'm going to have yeah. the luxury of when they hit high school, or when they hit college years, uh, I'm going to be probably in my early 40s and, uh, oh, wow. nice. you know, be able to, uh, you know, enjoy uh, enjoy life a little bit there. Not that yeah. I don't enjoy life with my kids, but, yeah. uh, you know, it's a different type of enjoyment. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, this question is the last question I typically ask before we go into our blitz round and it's been about a 50, 50 shot on whether it works or not. Tell us one of the funniest stories from your career in real estate. <laughs> okay. So, um, there was, a, I got a call on this place in, uh, I, I think it was in McCandless. And, uh, so th- this lady's telling me about this house. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a good deal. Uh, they wanted like 10,000 for it or yeah, I think it was, they wanted 10,000 for it. Or and something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I go out there and I'm like, so I, it was a Saturday morning. I remember this so clearly I get out of my truck and I walk up to the driveway. I had to park across the road, uh, go up to the driveway. There's two people, uh, with car doors or open there and they're putting on hazmat suits. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm walking up in flip flops and shorts and I'm like, hi, uh, I'm Mike. <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, oh, they're like, they're like, Oh, you need to, you need to have something on if you go in there. And, um, and I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not even doing that. They just, they opened the door, the garage door, uh, to the house and, literally there was a swarm of fleas and, and just all kind of bugs. And it just smelled like the worst thing I could ever imagine. Um, and <laughs> it's funny because, uh, one of the, uh, one of the guys that I talked to regularly from uh, Pittsburgh Rhea had been in that house two days ago. I didn't know it, but he made a, a post on Facebook, something like I was just in a house where I had to come home and take three showers. And so I didn't, I didn't put two and two together until <laughs> I got to this place. And <laughs> it was like, it was unbelievable. And then uh, the sad thing was, um, so I, th- there was a sad part to this too. <laughs> uh, I walk around, you know, I'm just walking the exterior and um, uh, I go around back and I hear somebody you know, saying something. And, um, yeah, I was like, I think it was the, the, the person that I met's mother, she was still living in the house and it, they had like 30 dogs, 40 cats or something. And it was just infested with fleas and uh, who knows what else, man. man. It was just, yeah, it was, it was bad. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I do believe that, uh, they uh they were able to um um move the property uh, i think there was a uh, a national uh wholesaler that came in and, and bought it or or had somebody buy it so uh it, it ended well for them too so yeah, yeah. i mean that area the the, uh, the land's probably worth more than 10 grand so yeah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah abs- absolutely uh yeah we've all yeah. been i mean if you deal with dilapidated properties uh, like i do we've all oh, been in my. those properties where you're like how did somebody live in this yeah you know, it's just yeah. A, this is bad <laughs> yeah yeah i've been to a number a number of places where i'm just like i don't even want to go in there because it's just nasty and uh yeah. And scary too. <laughs> you don't know. I mean, you go into, into vacant houses in, uh, you know, some neighborhoods you're like, man, <laughs> there might be some, somebody in here or a family in here, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why uh, you got the concealed carry permit and you protect Ab- yourself. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. All right. So uh, we're pretty much towards the end here. I have the same five questions I ask every person that comes on the show and I believe they do fit uh, for what you do as well. So I think okay. it should work well. I call it the blitz round. So okay. what is your favorite technology tool? Favorite technology to what? Your favorite technology tool. Oh, tool. Uh, my CRM. You want me to name it? Uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, uh, Podio. Yeah, I use Podio. Podio. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I've heard of it. Um, I, I'm, I'm one of those people who probably should use a CRM and mm. I, I just, I don't know, I use Excel spreadsheets and I'm weird yeah. and, and I, but, uh, <laughs> I, I do need to get to the, the 21st century with CRM one of these days. <laughs> what is your favorite real estate book? Uh, that's a good question. Um, actually it's not so much, uh, real estate related, but it could be heavily applied to real estate. Um, and it's a negotiation book, uh, by a former CIA or FBI, uh, never split uh, the difference hostage, hostage negotiator. Yeah. Never split the difference. I yep, love that. Book. It. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was tough awesome. to get through. I'm an audio book yeah. listener and it's a, it's okay. kind of a dry book, but it's got a yeah. lot of great content. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. I actually just uh, listened to that one last month. So oh, cool. Uh, I, I put, I definitely grabbed a couple things. I've been negotiating yeah. for a long time and I, I yeah. took a couple things from that book that I'm, I've used already and going to continue Absolutely. to use. Yeah. Fantastic book. Um, if you were not a wholesaler, what would you be? A flipper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same a flipper. row. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if I if I wasn't in real estate, uh, I'd probably still be in IT. Yeah. You still be in IT? Okay, yeah. cool. Um, what is your favorite hobby? Uh, fishing. Bass fishing. fishing. Yep. Bass fishing. Okay, yep. I I know a, a couple big fishers. So nice. I've never really got into it myself. I decided to pick up golfing instead, which I'm pretty that's, horrible at. That's but, my uh, second my second favorite hobby. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll have to go golfing one yeah. of these days. <laughs> What is your dream vacation? Uh, uh, the um, Tuscan hillside in Italy. Um, yeah, uh, I was, my wife and I were there in Italy, uh, different regions for our honeymoon. And uh, we spent a couple weeks out there and it was just, you know, I fell in love with it. It's, it's just amazing and, and uh, so cool to see. And, and the food is just better than you can imagine <laughs> well that that's great because we're it's on our bucket list because my wife's nice. italian and she wants to nice. go so that's awesome well well mike i really appreciate you coming on and spending a half hour with me and uh, i i hope everybody got as much out of it as i do and uh, i look forward to continue building our relationship and uh and, and working things out and keep doing what you're doing keep killing it buddy hey thanks a lot for having me and it was a pleasure all right we'll talk to you soon all right thanks Well, Realtor Nation, another great interview. I hope you got as much out of it as I did. I really wanted to kind of get the wholesaling aspect. Uh, And for those of you who don't know what wholesaling is, it could be a way for you to find deals for your clients that are looking for investment property. So I highly recommend you get out there and start networking with some wholesalers. And they could end up being a huge part of your team uh, or even being uh, agents on your team down the road. Because I think a lot of wholesalers uh, could do a lot of agent stuff. And and a lot of them do uh, um, sell properties properties as an agent as well. So definitely look into that and try and further your education on wholesaling. Uh, for all other content, please visit our website, dhrea.com slash learn. Until next time, this is Ian Hoover with the Deacon Hoover Radio Network signing off.